everybody, welcome back to my channel. Chloe here, and we're going to be taking another look at First Bite today. Today, what I'm going to try to do is either go for Laurel or Ilias' route, um, since we somehow got stuck on Valeria's, and I'm... Honest to God, I don't know how we did that. I'm confused. Um, I have a little friend with me today, and his name is Kiwi. Um, and you guys have seen it in a previous episode, but he's here... And he's hopefully just going to stay on my lap while we shoot because, um, yeah, he won't stop playing with the cords. If anybody has any idea on how to deter your cat from a desktop computer, I am desperate. We're going to be not doing like full on commentary today. Like this is probably, I'm just going to kind of click through to see what the route is. Um, because Kiwi and I don't have a ton of time because tomorrow we have to fly back home for the holidays. Yep, this little one is going to be going on a plane tomorrow. Oh my god, are you tired? Now he's... Hmm, are you okay? Okay. Um, he's gonna be getting on a plane tomorrow, so we've been trying to get prepped. We've been trying to... Like, that's why I didn't even drag out my green screen to, like, prevent you from seeing what's in the background today. Uh, because, yeah... We don't, we, we, we don't have time. Q and I don't have time, but I wanted to be sure to kind of play through the other routes for first bite since there's only two more. I think there's four different endings, but I'm personally only interested in getting like the two different endings with Ilias and Laurel. So I'm going to see what we need to do to get to that point. So I'm just going to kind of click around. We're just going to get started here. Okay. All right. I love that intro still. Huh? Yep, we're no. No. We're, our name is no. It, no. Why does the eye color matter, bro? But why does the eye color matter? Howdy. I'm just gonna keep trying to flatter Ilias. Okay, so I got through, so I pretty much just said, crush me like a melon, kind of appealed to his muscles, is what I basically did, and that's how we got to go through. So we're on part two now. So hopefully this worked out, I don't know. I want to be like you. Yeah, I want to be strong. Okay. That's you. But you'll never be better than me. Okay. <laughs> That's big, huge, extra large. I'm kind of strong, sure. But don't go thinking you could ever reach my level of perfection. Understand. Duly noted. Then I hear, is that a meow? Oh yeah, they have a cat. Do you really have no re regrets, Ilias? <laughs> Ilias. I want Ilias. Like I said before, your mind by right. Oh my god, we did it! <laughs> he gives me a wicked grin. It's been way too long since we had any real fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay. Also, if my makeup looks off, like I know that my cheeks look like unusually red, that's because I've, um, I packed my makeup brushes because I was like, I don't really want to, I don't really want to. Boom, 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 boom. Like the Venga boys. Boom, 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 boom. I want you in my room. We'll spend the night together from now until forever. Boom, 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 boom. I want a double boom. <laughs> I had an I had an ex boyfriend who um he loved that song. I had never heard that song before in my goddamn life, and he played it, and it was just uh, it was a good song. Uh, it was a very, it was a very fun song. It was a very fun song. So that one actually after, even though that relationship ended like pretty quickly, like that's a song that I listened to and I'm like, oh my God, it is. It's the Venga boys, but they're called the Juego lads. <laughs> oh my God. I'm the only one that cares, but that's funny. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. I love it. That's so funny. Oh, that's so funny. But yeah, it's that one and then G Baby Give It Up by Casey and the Sunshine Band, which was also a very random choice that he had picked. Um, and I was like, I mean, this vibes, though. This is a vibe. Um, and yeah, that's another song that I still really, really love. I love, I love Venga Boys. This is boom, boom, boom. And only boom, boom, boom. And then Casey and the Sunshine Bands give it up and only give it up. Only that one. So, I would have... <laughs> okay, so... What do I hope to gain with Ilias? Well, we're going to the bone zone, of course. Of course we would. There's only one thing on my mind right now, and that's Ilias and I joined together in several unholy positions. I want to F. Before I can dwell it any longer, he tosses me onto the bed like a pile of dirty laundry. Whatever happened to romance? You don't want romance. You literally just said it. Am I high? Like, don't answer that question. I'm not. I never will be, and I have never been. Um, unfortunately, I was born like this. <laughs> There's no cure. I won't lock the door. He drags his tongue over his incisors. I feel like he would like that. And that I don't know how I feel about him feeling that he likes that. Why would I run? I already told you I wouldn't be like you for you to turn me. At least I is obviously rather disappointed. It's boring if you just sit there. But if you ran, I could chase you. What the fuck? Okay, this is less sexy than Valeria. Oh my god, he looks quite wistful. Elisa praises me for a little while, almost as if he doesn't quite know what to do with me. Well, he crosses the room to sit next to me on the bed, his big body hunched over awkwardly, his hands resting upon his muscle flies. He looks totally out of his element. It's kind of adorable. So, Elise drums his fingers on his thighs. You, you don't do this much, huh? It's clear that my words poke at something sensitive in him. Do what? Sit next to a human without killing them? He's clearly grumpy. Of course I don't. You don't have to just sit there, you know? I know, I wasn't going to. He stands again, suddenly looming You're over me. I'm going to show you some things, you know, before I kill you. Oh? you die in my room, it'll be terrified and screaming. Oh no. <laughs> I keep picking. Oh my god. So maybe before you die, you might want to appreciate the cool shit I have here. Sure. Like your nipple. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I apologize. Dying to Elise is sort while supremely sexy in its own unique ways. Maybe not the ideal way to die when there's a hot vampire with a perfectly capable pair of things in my presence. If I absolutely had to choose, death by vampire... Sounds much more fun. I put a finger to the sword and gently push it down, looking around the room as if I, as I search for something to ask about. Ilias, perhaps realizing he's getting his way, lowers the sword to the ground and lets it drop, looking at me expectantly. Your room is so nice. His face instantly lights it's up. the best room in this house. Just look at it. Why do you guys all have this wallpaper? He gestures expansively, directing my attention to the various items strewn across the room or slung haphazardly over the furniture. I've hit the jackpot. There's so much shit in here that I can ask him about. The pinups, obvious. Oh, the music poster. I point to a mo massive poster clumsily taped to the wall. Big fan of Huega Lads. The biggest. No one loves the Huega Lads more than I do. Oh, Huego. I love how we all say it like a cough. Like Huego. Huego Lads. He folds his eyes, her ar arms over his chest, towering over me in a pose that would be incredibly intimidating if it weren't in service of his asser sure assertion that he's the number one Huego Lads fan. The Huego Lads took over the music scene in the late 90s with their horny party music, but they've long since disappeared from the airwaves. Looking at Ilias, however, you'd think that they never left. What are they doing these days? There are so many people who like made electronic music back in the early 2000s, and especially those artists who made music for DDR. Are. Like Cascada, you know? Cascada's music, every time we touch, wasn't exclusively for DDR. Like, it was a song, I think, at a later point, on a later version of DDR. I don't think it was in the release, but it came about later. And, like, what did, whatever happened to Cascada? Like, what did she do? What happened to, like, so many of those? 
I still think DDR music is a bop. I honestly, if there is one franchise that I think should come back and only because it's like better than Just Dance, it's DDR. I'm like, that should come back. I also think that I would appreciate a reprise of Guitar Hero. Um, not Band Hero though, and definitely not DJ Hero. But Guitar Hero, yes, Guitar Hero was fun. Guitar Hero was fun because it puts you in an immense amount of pain. Um, you would like, <laughs> you would like hurt your wrist. Like I remember my friends and I, like when we were done with the Guitar Hero, we used to kind of have to like hold our wrists and like actually like move our wrists because when you're playing Guitar Hero, it's just like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> sorry Kiwi, it's okay Kiwi, I'm sorry. Kiwi's trying to sleep. I'm trying to not let him sleep though, which is also why I have to hurry up. And speaking of hurry up, I should hurry my ass up. Sorry, <laughs> that was a random tangent. I should be careful with my response. It seems he takes them very seriously. Not hard when no one, name five of their songs. Ilya scoffs. Bang, 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 all we do is party. Boom, boom, boom. We're off to Cancun. Uncle Bart from St. Bart's. <laughs> Come on, at least ask for something difficult. Wait, Uncle Bart from St. Bart's. All we do is party. I think we like to party is the song in our world. I'm impressed. <laughs> of course you are. I'm beautiful and my taste is good. He runs his tongue across his canines, his fangs gleaming as he tilts his head. But you're here with me, so we know you must have a little taste. Pin-ups. nothing more beautiful. outside the bounds of gender. Ah, yes. He walks over to the f wall with pinups taped messily to it, admiring the various bodies on display. Some are nude, some are near or mostly nude, but all of them are sensual. They seem to come from all different sorts of places, some from magazines, some playing cards, a few of them are even signed, glossy photos, like the kind you pay good money for at conventions. I lie, things like this weren't so common. I had a few drawings I carried with me. I prized possessions after my wedding. I'm just imagining a stick figure with boobs, to be completely honest. <laughs> he looks wistful. Where are they now? When I from my oh, now I feel bad for making fun of him for losing his porn. Why does he remind me of, oh my god, the dude from What We Do in the Shadows? Oh my god, what is his name? What is his goddamn name? I just know him as the guy that shouts bat and he like jumps and yeah, I'm sorry. I've, I've been more obsessed with Nandor. I don't think I even remember the girl's name. I don't think I remember the lady's name. I like Nandor and Guillermo, which just shows you how gay I am. I like the ones with the most sexual tension that's clearly unresolved and really hope that it would be. Yeah. Hopefully in season four. Anyways, he runs a hand through his hair. That was right before I met Val. I must have murdered half of Europe back then. Wait, you murdered half of Europe for lost nudes? <laughs> he laughs like he's remembering some childish indiscretion rather than mass murder committed in the name of titties. Half of Europe sounds excessive, and while I wasn't exactly the number one history student, the only thing I can think of that might match those numbers would be the plague. I was an absolute monster back then. My bloodlust controlled me at all times. I got turned. He turns back towards the wall, tracing his fingers over the magazine pinups as he recalls some bygone time. Now the blood of Moros. I could hear the frightened little rabbit hearts beating. His fingertips curl inward, pressing against the model's printed thigh. It drove me fucking insane. To hear them outside in the sunlight, living their stupid mortal lives as I stay trapped. He tips his head back, his eyes closed. So every night when the sun sets, I kill them. And when the town dies... I'm sorry, I have to turn down the music. It's like... Wow, I don't know why it's, it sounds even louder today. Hold up. How is my... No, voice volume up. Voice volume up all the way. Okay, I guess it doesn't... You really killed half of Europe. He nods, entirely certain of his own suspect. <laughs> of course I did. You probably think I'm lying because your mortal brain can't imagine so much death. He folds his arms over his chest, a cruel grin splayed across Humans his lips. Are so pathetically weak. 
technology has changed, your weapons have evolved, but all that means is that you're killing each other more easily. You fail to see the truth, Lex. The predator is at the very top of the chain. You mean Jeffrey Bezos, right? You mean Jeffrey Bezos, right? He slaps his chest, his eyes beginning to take on a sinister red glow as he bares his teeth. I get the distinct feeling that my time is running thin, and if I have any other questions I'd like to ask him, now is probably time to do so. Before we do the whole <laughs> killing me thing, I just wanted to ask you something. Elias studies me intently for a moment. Perhaps his murderous instincts are warring with his ego and the need to garner more of my praise before he's done with me. Fine. Ask him about the swords. You have so many swords in here. Do you collect them or something? Kiwi, you're all legs. Kiwi is so big. I don't think... Yeah, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I, I've tweeted some pictures with Kiwi. He's a huge-ass cat. This is, like, the biggest kitten I've ever seen. He's He seems to be getting bigger by the minute. It's kind of terrifying. Is that why he sleeps so much? Because all he is is just getting to be giant? You know, the vet told me that he was a Maine Coon. And I was like, I mean, he's not, like, full-blooded. Like, clearly, he's not full-blooded because he doesn't have, like, the little black tips on the ears. Because Maine Coon kittens, when they're babies, they've got, like, a tiny little tuft of, like, super sharp, like, black pointed hair. Um, Kiwi doesn't have that. He's got, like, some pointy hairs. But, um, no, he's a, he's massive. In fact, I gotta, I might need to adjust him. Ilya Stantz, his eyes shining with pure, unadulterated himbo excitement. When I was human, I had many blades. But I only had what I could find in my travels. Did you know that you can buy swords from anywhere on the internet? <laughs> oh my god, no. He picks up a sword, one that I know I've seen at a resonance fair, but my inexperienced eyes can't identify it any further. <laughs> I just got this one last week. He swings it expertly, but with the careless air of a boy playing with his toys, I can feel the wind from it slice through the air. It's not as good as the ones I used to have, of course. I bought so many cheap ones that broke with one swing. He frowns at me. Did you know people sell replica weapons? Fake weapons that look like real ones? He puts the first sword down and picks up a huge one that looks exactly like something I've seen in my favorite JRPG. I've looked all over the internet for a real one of these. Every single one I bought broke when I tried to use it properly. He seems sincerely sad. Do I actually have the heart to tell him that it's not a real sword? Modern weapon makers, makers are cowards. You deserve a real one. At least his eyes light up with the joy of someone who feels like he's truly being Hell seen. Yeah. That's what I've been saying. He swings the sword again, putting on quite a show for me. He really seems to enjoy being watched. Hmm, interesting. If these blacksmiths had any balls at all, I'd have a room full of the finest swords that the world has seen from every era of history. He lifts the sword high into the air over his head. This sword. If I had this weapon when I was alive, I could have killed even more spectacularly. He dramatically thrusts the sword down into the floor, pointy end first, like he intended for it to stick out of ground, but he cracks it in half. Sweetie, you're, you're, you need to sit up. That's four now. I guess they haven't been reading my emails. Your emails? What emails are you sending them? Every time I break them so a sword, I send them an email letting them know how they can make it better. Were you a blacksmith in your time? What? Of course not. Then what kind of advice are you giving them? Uh. I tell them to make it stronger. Obviously. He's the worst kind of person that you have to deal with in customer service. That someone just, like doesn't knows how doesn't know how anything works and so they just try to tell you to do things and you're like it's not how that works also wait i'm very distracted by this pinup so what is this supposed to be i'm distracted by this outfit is this supposed to be a swimsuit and if so like why is half her ass hanging out why is like part of her torso covered but then like what is this like what would you wear for that I need to see, I from if the developers are watching this, I need to see this outfit, like, as it is meant to be visualized from a full frontal view. What is this outfit? Is this, is this supposed to be swims? Because, like, her torso, her ass is so nice, and, and nicely toned, by the way, but her torso is so long. She's got a long torso. Long torso problems. Am I right? Hashtag long torso problems. Makes sense. Have they ever responded to you? Never, cowards. We've been talking for a while now. Elias settles himself next to me on the bed again, but both the atmosphere and his demeanor are noticeably different from when I first came in. He seems far more comfortable with me now. Who would have guessed the secret to a vampire's heart is letting him show you his stuff? Ooh, Elias is staring at me with a hunger in his gaze, but it's not the sort of hunger featured extensively in my Mothman self-insert fanfics, you know. 
The thirsty kind. The look in those golden eyes give me the distinct impression that there's nothing but a sexy, bloody death awaiting me here. Well, they're not golden anymore, are they? It's been fun. It really has. He smiles, baring his fangs to me. They look a lot longer than I remember. I idly wonder if it's about some supernatural effery that makes them extend when he's about to feed. When he's about to feed. I can hear every beat of your frightened little heart. He inhales, closing his eyes for just a moment as he takes in my scent. I can smell your fear. His eyes flick down on my lap, then return to my face, and your arousal. He draws his tongue across his teeth, his breathing beginning You're to pick up. smart little human, aren't you? You know how the night ends. I shouldn't have made fun of him as much. With me in your bed? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Entertain me one last time, human. Let's see how far you can get before I paint the walls with your blood. Kiwi, help. It's hard to formulate a response. I've thought about this moment so often before now, but all my little fantasies couldn't have prepared me for the reality of staring down the barrel of my own mortality. Run for it. He already said he likes it when you run, right? Panic floods through me as I force my leaden limbs to move. I scramble up from the door and slam the full force of my body into the door as I fumble it open. I keep expecting to feel him on me at any moment, but it seems like he's waiting. The sound of his cruel laughter grows more distant as I flee from his room, but somehow I can still feel the phantom of his rough grip on my shoulder and his cool breath on my neck. My heart beats faster than it ever has in my life, but my body still moves forward on autopilot. They say fight or flight while well, I'm doing both. I fantasize about being hunted by monsters like him more times than I can count, but I never counter the way fear consumes your every thought in this situation. I search for exits and places to hide as I run, but somehow all I find are dark corners and obstacles obscuring my path. My body eventually gives into terror and exhaustion when I trip over something. My jelly limbs can't quite manage to pick me back up again. I only just have time to turn around before Ilias catches up to me, slamming me into the ground and sinking his fangs into my neck in one fell swoop. White out pain surges through me in a flash, a deadly brand against my skin, as Ilias cuts through layers of fat and muscle with his dagger sharp teeth. As my vision begins to fade, I dimly note the strange contrast of Ilias' cold skin and the heat of the blood pooling beneath my body. If I wasn't currently dying, it might have been been a nice touch or a story. There's nothing in darkness takes me. God damn it, Ilias, I have to do this all over again. Okay, back to Ilias. So maybe let's stop being an absolute jerk to Ilias, right? There's nothing like <laughs> fear. I don't smell much. Tell me how you do it. Oh, shit. You act so brave. But all it took was one little movement to rattle you. I'm afraid. Your own body ratted you out. Your little heart is going a mile a minute. Why did I pick this man yeah. first thinking it would be easy? Because I underestimated himbos. Never underestimate oh, a himbo. sweet fear. It's like syrup. When he's looming over me like this, it's impossible to think. Fear and arousal are in a slap fight in the driver's seat of my mind. Do it. Let's out a low growl and he darts down his wicked thing, sinking into my neck. Wait, what? You're already in my bed. Okay, there we go. So, flatter him. Everybody needs to be flattered excessively. I know, Kiwi Wee. Oh, sorry. I bonked him. He keeps bonking. Elise's golden gaze seems hotter than I remember. His eyelids slow and his fangs biting into his plush bottom lip. Come here, sweetie. You have to you have to reorient yourself here a little bit. Can you here's the week? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Just sit like this. Sit like this, okay? Reaches out to take my chin between his thumb and fourth finger. No. What are you doing? No. How about you get up onto your thing? How about you get up on your thing? Okay. Never mind. Okay. He reaches out to take my chin between his thumb and forefinger, tilting my chin up to reveal more of my neck. His gaze sweeps across my body, but it swiftly returns to my throat. For a moment, I'm not sure whether he means to devour me or, well, devour me, but I don't have to wait long for my answer. His tongue laves across my neck, and I'm shocked by the coolness of it compared to hu human. So sweet. His voice is thickened by lust, his touch e eager and consumptive. Your body is so 
so soft and warm. Like a rabbit. No, I'm sorry. I feel his fangs drag over my neck and a fe- spike of fear jolts through me as I remember that I'm dealing with a vampire who would love nothing more than to devour me. He pushes me down onto the bed, his hands reaching up to grasp the hem of his hoodie as he ne- settles into a kneeling position above me. He yanks it off and throws... Oh, no, 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 I've already told you not to do that. Oh, you almost fell. Okay. He pushes me down onto the bed, his hands reaching up to grasp the hem of his hoodie as he settles into a kneeling position above me. He yanks it off and throws it aside, looking down at me with a faint red glow in his Tell gaze. Me how beautiful you think I am. Okay. His sweats leave nothing, absolutely nothing to the imagination. I can see that I'm about to be in for a long night. Great. Fantastic. He doesn't leave me with much choice, so I comply. The words slip from my mouth as soon as they come to me. Beautiful doesn't even begin to describe you. You're a god. You're the most magnificent thing I've ever seen, and no one, mortal or immortal, could even dream of coming close to you. He places a massive palm on my chest, squeezing just on the edge of too hard. The strength I feel in that grip is both terrifying and arousing. Tell me you've never seen a man as perfect as I am. Okay, this is a little this is a little much. This is a little much even for me. Simping. Hardcore simping is not what I anticipated doing tonight, but here I am. I haven't and I never will, not even if I live for a thousand years longer. (laughs) Elias laughs, baring his fangs in a smile that's equal parts hunger and arousal. He doesn't wait for any further compliments, lowering himself to kiss me eagerly. His fangs graze my lips, his tongue cool against my own, and it's a unique sensation. Sweetie, you're falling over because you're being long and leggy. Oh, stop. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Let me just hold you. Let me just... Are you okay? Was that a hiccup? Okay, let's just hold you. Let... Mama can hold you, and you can sleep. There we go. His fangs graze my lips, his tongue cool against my own, and it's a unique sensation to say the least, but it feels incredible. Oh God, what it's like to be with someone new. His strong hands are making short work of my clothing, tearing what he can't manage to remove fast enough. I'd object, but he leaves no room for argument of any sort. He doesn't bother to remove his own clothes all the way, only shifting his sweats and underwear far down enough to... Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can... I don't think that this man's gonna last long. He takes me without ceremony, consuming me like a man long deprived of substance. His pace is intense, his presence and physicality overwhelming. It's clear he needs this, and he intends to take what he wants from me, but I want to give myself to him too. It feels like I've been waiting my whole entire life to have this experience, and now that it's finally here, it's absolute ecstasy. Being in his presence has forced me to to contemplate my own morality, but the way he touches me makes me feel more alive than I ever have. I feel as though he's avoiding biting me, even though he'd really like to, but when he slows his pace and looks down at me, it becomes clear why. That look on your face. It's like you don't know whether to scream my name or cry. I really genuinely don't. His eyes have gone red again, his fangs lengthening. I'm scared. Mom, come pick me up. I'm scared. My my child is slowly reading the words. You can't read this. You're You know what? He won't remember it. It's fine. He's fine. He doesn't bother to wait for my response, diving down to sink his fangs into my neck. I scream, but I'm not certain anymore whether it's from pain or pleasure. Both, maybe. But then it all fades into the same sensation, my vision blackening at the edges before everything begins to melt away. Wait, I f***ing died? Wait, what the hell? Bang, bang, bang. All we do is party. And... You want to see my concerts? Oh. It was on the beach. I haven't felt the sand between my toes in a long time. When I listen to the wiggle lines, I can feel the sun on my skin. What the fuck? I never cared about the sun when I was human. It was just there. What the fuck? Sorry, my little cat's I didn't think to about sleep. it at all when I was turned. But somewhere, this need grew in me. The hunger for blood covered it for a long time, but... 
When I listen to the Huego lads sing about fucking on the beach, I remember for a moment what it was to live. To feel the sun shine on your bare skin. I'm so fucking sorry. Fucking and partying are two of the most important things in the world to me. Boom. Uh, the an instrumental version of Boom musician. Boom Boom, but it's Dead sad. <laughs> Plays in the background. <laughs> Oh, okay, so this, you have to boom, boom, boom to the Juego Leds' boom, boom, boom. Great. It... Wait, what the fuck? You're a smart look. What do you mean? Oh, okay, I was gonna be really, 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 really upset. Yeah. I was about to be really, 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 really upset. Yeah. I will listen to the Huega lads with you if that's what you need yeah. me to do. I will listen to the Huega no. lads with you. I will I just... listen all night to the Huega lads. I died? Oh my god. I have to tell him explicitly that I want to listen to the freaking Huego lads with him. This man is a bitch, okay? This is a bitch behavior. This has gone from himbo behavior to bitch behavior. I can't believe you're making me say that in front of my eight week old child, but it's true. He's nine weeks old, actually, I'm sorry. Your your nine week anniversary is tomorrow, baby boy. Are you gonna kill me? <laughs> He's got a big stretch. I've been alive for 2,400 years. And I only ever met two other people who got me. I can't believe that telling this man explicitly that you want to listen to the Juego lads is what does it for him. What the hell? What the actual hell? This is like, this is, this is, this is what I would be like if I slept with everybody who said Beyonce should have won the Grammy over Adele. Like, this is what I would be like. Is this what I'm like? Is this a mirror? I don't know if I like it. Okay. If you don't want to be a vampire, I'll eat you. No problem. He says this with the casual air of offering to someone offering to change your car's oil. But if you want to join us. Yeah, let's do it. Of course I do. Ellie smiles, and for once, there's no hint of a real threat behind it. He seems sincerely happy with my decision. Good. Well, you got any last words as a human or whatever? Last words. I guess I do have to technically die before I become a vampire. I give a good thought, trying to register if there are any regrets I have, anything's left undone. Please delete my browser history. But in all seriousness, there are things I should be prepared for after I get turned, right? Everything I know, I know from the media. And as I've learned from this trio, that hasn't exactly been the most accurate. God damn you, Bram Stoker. Actually, I have a few questions before we start. What's the process for turning me? What's the process for turning me? It's easy. I drink your blood. You drink mine. Okay, Kiwi, you are being a long boy. Ilias gives me a cheeky little grin. He's like hanging. He, I'm not kidding when I say that this cat is very long. He's already like hanging off. I have thick ass thighs, guys. I don't know if you've noticed, but I kind of, she thick though. She thick. Um his legs are hanging off of me like he is he is from shoulder to torso this is him at nine weeks old again i can't i cannot emphasize this enough nine weeks five maybe five pounds now maybe four that's a lot he's gonna be a big cat well this gives me a cheeky little grin biting the, his hard the single part thing is gonna be making sure i don't just kill you once i get going he exhales, clearly lost in the pleasant thought of his it's own violence. It's real hard to stop. Okay, well, I trust you. Not. At least his expression grows more serious. I don't know, really. He frowns, running a hand through his hair. I spent my entire life becoming as strong as I could. But training wasn't enough. I searched for all sorts of things to make me stronger. Potions, amulets, trinkets. But nothing worked. None of it was enough. Eventually, I knew I had nothing left to try but to strike a deal with the Dijin. 
One night I met a woman who offered exactly what I hoped for. She told me she could communicate with Dijin and that she'd make a deal for me. He gives me a cheeky grin. She was also very hot. Of course. So I thought, hey, sex and ultimate power. Who wouldn't go for that? His expression grew serious again. Well, it was great, but then Pain she bit me. was like nothing I've ever felt. And I'm not a weak man. You're falling off. She drank my blood and... He seems almost ashamed. I could hardly move or speak. I've never been at someone else's mercy in that way. He looks down at his lap, his expression I serious. I was so weak, I couldn't even see what she did or how she did it. But I could taste her blood in my mouth. Baby boy. Oh my goodness. You are a long boy. You're a long boy. You're just long. He's just so long. And then the pain. She whispered things into my ears. The last pieces of my soul left my body. Cruel words and praise back to back. The most intimate experience of my life until then. Before I met Val and Lore, anyway. What happened when it was all over? Ellie's expression goes salty. Everything went dark. And when I woke up a few days later, she was gone. Sweet, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You're 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 being a little roly poly oly. Roly poly oly. That was a time. That was a show. Anyways, she left me in her tent alone without even telling me what she'd done. I tried to go out and find her. And... <sighs> the sun coming through the opening in the tent nearly killed me. I was a new vampire with no idea what that meant. And the hunger. It drove me mad. When the sun left, I set the tent. Uh, when the sun set, I left the tent and killed every person in my I never path. I did find her. Never even got her name. And I don't even know her last name. My mama would be so ashamed. Oh. Oh, good. He didn't run off. Okay, great. I'm just trying to make sure he doesn't go behind the computer because he'll break it. Have you ever done this before? That's a curiosity. Hmm. I got so into it, I kind of just... killed him. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. That's the opposite of comforting, Everyone at least. Everyone fucks up sometimes, right? Eh, yeah, what can you do? What can you do? I mean, obviously, I'm perfect. I'm good at everything. A hunter of my caliber? Can anyone blame me for doing what I do best? He smiles so purely while talking about killing, steadfastly refusing to let me forget it, just how deadly he is. That's fair. He moves before I can even register it, one massive fist grabbing my forearm and tossing me to the ground. He stands, towering over me there on the floor. Even without his impressive fight, I'd have to marvel at the sheer mass of him. That is, if my life wasn't currently flashing before my eyes. Me one last time. Let's see how far you can get before I paint the walls with your blood. Bitch, I don't fucking know. I don't know. Wait, what? What? I'm so upset. This is the furthest I've gotten. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The only mistake that I made was basically instead of saying, are you going to turn me? Are you going to kill me? Like, that's the one decision that threw me off. You know, this, this. Oh, Together, okay, but we got the CG. You will be beautiful and powerful and terrifying. Why does this man's hairstyle look like it changed here? We'll dance to the juego lines in the moonlight. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> finally we made it oh finally the turning is that the juego lads Hell yeah oh my god it is the juego lads this is like the worst hangover Ilya's cannonballs under the bed. My body bounces against the mattress as he lands and he crawls over to me. <laughs> Good night, no. He says it lovingly, like a father welcoming a child to the world. Ha ha night? How long was I asleep dead. for? You were dead. His expression is serious, but even he still gyrates his hips and chest to the luring beats of Euro Pop. I guess he just can't help himself. He meets my gaze as his lips <laughs> hook into a smirk. You were dead for three days. Like Jesus, Don't worry huh? About her. 
I laugh, looking up at him in all his himbo majesty. I feel awake, alive, seen, but even, but something's off. I lift the covers off to take the stock of my situation. When I look down at my body, I'm almost blindfolded by an explosion of color. Ilias? Why am I dressed like a raver? I hold with the neo p- neon pink pacifier on my neck for emphasis. You were dead. I was bored. Don't listen to him, no. He spent days picking out every article of clothing for you, down to the pacifier. He wouldn't shut up about you for the first... Okay, why do ravers wear the pacifiers, though? No one has ever explained this to me, and I'm too afraid to look it up. Okay? <laughs> I need answers. Ones that are, like, suited... Like, PG-13 rated, please. Please don't... Please don't tell me that this is a fetish with the raving community. <laughs> We had to bring blood bags to him, hence the plastic mess everywhere. I'm pleasantly surprised to f- hear that Ilias cares so much about my well-being as new Wait, vampire. there's more. <laughs> Laurel! Val! Are you ready? <laughs> you know what to do, right? <sighs> yes, Ilias, you've been incessantly reminding us every hour. On the hour. Shut up, you're gonna ruin it! <laughs> Get into position. Both Valeria and Laurel, Valeria, Valeria and Laurel pull something from behind their backs and place it on their heads with Leah's following suit. It's the party hats. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Aw, that's so funny. Yay, we're a vampire now. See, I told you I wasn't gonna fuck it up. You told me repeatedly that you were, sir? How many times do I have to tell you I'm perfect? Okay, and then it's just the same ending. Well. Let's party, baby. Here we go. Oh my god, after a very long... I've been recording for an hour and 30. I kept fucking up so bad. Oh my god, I've been recording for... Okay, so after an hour and 30 minutes, we finally got it. So, hooray, we did it. This is the Ilias route. Do not ask me to post the friggin' steps in the comment section, as I am very tired and sad that it took me this long. Um, but now I really want to listen to the Venga Boys, so there's that. But if you guys like this video, please leave a like, as it really does help the channel out. Really also helps my cat. He's right there really helps him know that um, his little antics are funny and not a distraction from my ability to do my job. So that's great. <laughs> He's great. Um, anyways, yeah, so go ahead, leave a like on the video. And if you want, why not subscribe? And when you subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you get updates on when I upload future episodes. Without further ado, thank you all so, so, so much for watching. Bye. I'd like to give a very special shout out and thanks to my patrons, Deep Dive Dylan, D. Roberts, Brian White, Caleb Putnam, Robin Harper, Bob Conway, Cody Webb, Manicus Sama, and Gus Fuss. Thank you all so much.